What's up, Mets fans? Welcome back. Talking Mets and Rob. How's everybody doing? Before I get into the Jose Ramirez possible trade with the Mets, don't forget, guys, to slam on that like button if you enjoy my video. And if you enjoy my videos and want more content, guys, smash that subscribe button and you'll get all the videos, all the live streams, and the notifications that you want that I'm going to be doing my video, guys. All right? So let's get right into the Jose Ramirez trade. All right, guys. So should the Mets go after Jose Ramirez? Should the Mets trade for him? Absolutely. Jose Ramirez is 27 years old. He was an all-star in 2017 and 2018. This guy is a really good defensive third baseman. Offensively, he's one of the top players in the game. And as we know, as Sandy Alderson said, Steve Cohen says, they are not very fond of J.D. Davis at third base. Offensively, he's a good player. Defensively, he's shaky. And we all know that. A lot of Mets fans like J.D. Davis because we see him play every day. He's an upbeat guy. He's a really good guy. But when you can get an all-star type caliber player in Jose Ramirez at 27 years of age and under team control, that is a win-win. Yes, we're going to have to look, give up a couple of guys uh, in our prospect pool and probably J.D. Davis. I'm going to show you the, the trade scenario that I believe that can get it done. But if you look at the stats really quick that I'm going to show you, I like to look at the last four years to give a pretty good gauge on what this player is. In 2017, he was an all-star. He had 152 games, had 29 home runs, 83 RBIs, and he had a 318 batting average. Really good, right? Look at 2018. Again, an all-star, 157 games. He had 578 at-bats. He had 39 home runs, 105 RBIs, and he batted 270. So his power did go up a little bit. So it went up 10 home runs, but his batting average dropped, which seems to be what usually happens when home runs go up. Strikeouts are going to go up, you know, swing rate, swing, you know, the launch angle and all that other stuff that probably make him strike out a little bit more. In 2019, he wasn't an all-star, but he was pretty good. He missed a, a couple of games uh, with an injury, but he played 129 games. He had 482 at-bats. He had 23 home runs, 83 RBIs, and he batted 255. So he progressed. He digressed a little bit, but he was injured, so he missed a few games. So that's understandable, but he's still a good player. Last year, in 2020, he played 58 games, so he was healthy. He had 219 at-bats. He had 17 home runs, 17 home runs in 60 games, 46 RBIs, and he batted 292. So he was trending up again. So I think he's still going to be a trending up. He's still going to be ascending. He's only 27-year-old, guys. So now we're going to look at his contract because that's obviously important. Like I was saying, he's under control for the next couple of years. In 2021, he's going to be making $9 million at the age of 28. And the next two years are club options. That's a big deal for the Mets. Why do I say that? Because the Mets have the option to, to take, pick up that team option for $12 million in 2022 and then another club option in 2023 for $14 million. This is really important to understand because, yes, you're going to have to give up a few plays that we're going to look at the trade in a little bit, but you're going to have this guy for the next three years. If he plays well in 2021, the Mets are going to pick up that option, no doubt. And it makes sense because the team has control, the player does not. And he's again, he's only 27, 28 years old, and he is an all star type caliber player. And he's a really good defensive third baseman. And this is exactly what the Mets need. We need more defensive guys in the field. We just need it. You know, it helps our pitchers. You know, we don't have to score as many runs. And a defensive team, good pitching, wins championships. We see it all the time. So with the club option, if the Mets don't pick up, the club option. It's a $2 million buyout for the next in 2022 and 2023. So that's another thing to look at. You got to look into it. I think the Mets should really make this trade. I think they're really involved in this trade and we just don't know it yet. And that's a big deal. So what about the trade? All right. So this is what the Mets will get. The Mets will obviously get back Jose Ramirez at 27 years old under team control. The Indians will get JD Davis because they need a third baseman. Thomas Sapecki. He's the eighth-ranked uh, prospect in the Mets system. And Carlos Cortez, who is an infielder, second baseman, who is the 17th-ranked uh, prospect in the Mets system. This is pretty steep when it comes to giving up Zupecki, especially when he can be a part of this 2021 roster because he is projected to be a part of this team. And Carlos Cortez is projected to be 
uh, estimated time arrival to the major leagues in 2021. But you really have nowhere to put him. You got McNeil. You're going to have Jose Ramirez. You have Lindor. And he doesn't play first base. So there's nowhere to put Cortez. So it obviously makes sense to put him in this deal. Give him the Cleveland. They're looking for young infielders. They're looking for young talent. And Dupecki, I know he's a good – he's a he really big, good pitcher. He's been good in the minor leagues. He's the eighth-ranked prospect for the Mets. But at the same time, guys, you got to give up – you got to give something to get something. And Jose Ramirez is worth getting that. And J.D. Davis is obviously – can't be on this team with Jose Ramirez being the third baseman. And you have team control for the next three years. So this is the trade that I'm looking at. This is a trade that I think that could get it done. And the way I'm thinking is that the Mets should get this done. It only makes this team better. It makes this team better defensively. It makes this team better offensively. So Jose Ramirez to the Mets for J.D. Davis, Thomas Zepecki, and Carlos Cortez. Some people might say it might be too much. It might be too little. Cleveland will never go for it. I think Cleveland will go for it. The reason why is because they don't want to pay the $9 million on his contract this year and the $12 million next year and the $14 million a year after that. Cleveland want to get rid of the payroll. It's obvious. It's clear. It makes sense. But at the same time, they can't afford it. And to get rid of Jose Ramirez, they got to find a good trade partner. A lot of teams can be inter interested. That's a guarantee. But it seems like Cleveland and the Mets have a really good relationship. And it's a good idea, especially when you got Carlos Carrasco, you got Francisco Lindor, you got Cleveland guys who know about Jose Ramirez. And it could be possible that Cleveland can be working well with the Mets when it comes to a trade. And I think the Mets could give enough to get this trade done. All right, guys, I want to thank you for watching, guys. Watch out for this trade. Don't forget to smash the like button. Crash on that subscribe button. If you want more content, guys, thank you for watching, and let's go Mets.